another absolute classic on Test Gear Teardown today. Today we've got the very fine AVO Model 8 multimeter. This is an analog multimeter made in England by the AVO company. AVO, of course, means amps, volts, and ohms. Um, the company goes way back, and the design of this meter goes way back. And I think you can tell from the the materials it's made of that this is an old design. It's all Bakelite. This is a glass window, no plastic here. This is actually glass. The handle at the top of the meter you carry it around with, that's leather. That's not a plastic strap. That's a leather strap. Um, the whole thing is, on the inside, as we'll see, uh, brass and copper. All the resistances are wire wound. So this is a very fine bit of kit. Um, this particular one has a date code in the display on the scale of the meter. The date code on this one is 660, which is 6, 1960, June 1960. So this is actually older than I am. It's quite hard to get a sense in this picture of the weight and the scale of it. I thought I'd try to compare the size of it by showing you a floppy disk in comparison. That doesn't really work, does it? Because we don't know what size they are anymore. Um, so how about this? Here's a here's a nine volt battery for a sense of scale. This is a big meter. It's big and it's heavy. So I do apologise if I if I happen to thump it on the table a bit. It does affect the microphone slightly. Um, but it is a big, heavy Bakelite meter. Um, it measures amps, volts and ohms. This is the positive terminal and negative terminal. Two more terminals up here. This is two and a half thousand volts DC minus and plus. Sorry, mi minus DC and that one's for AC measurement. These are omitted on the more recent ones because they're not really very safe. Um, this particular one, let's say 1960, this is a Mark II. It says down here in the, uh, the little um, marking Model 8 Mark II. Um, so that's from the late 50s to the mid 60s, I believe, was the Mark II. Um, the whole thing is really quite substantial. Let's turn it up on its side and turn it over. There we go. There's the operating instructions. You can see there's feet on the back here, some instructions. It's meant to be used lying on its back, so it's got these feet to rest it on when it's, when it's in operation. On the top, let's just move that so that its top is visible, that is the cover of the battery compartment. Now the batteries are only used for the ohms range. The energy to move the pointer is supplied from your circuit. So um, the whole thing is fine to operate without batteries unless you want to measure ohms, which case you need a battery to put some current through your resistor. I'll take that off. And in there we've got two batteries. We've got a one and a half volt D cell and we've got a, a special 15 volt battery. This is an ever ready BLR121. Um, if you need to get replacements for these you can still get them or you can make a stack of three volt lithium batteries in the, the housing of the existing battery. Uh, to replace that. It's a special battery that I've only ever seen it used in AVO meters. I believe it was used in other things, but I've never seen this particular battery size in anything else. Radio rallies, you'll find people have large stocks of replacement batteries for these things, very popular item. There's the leather strap. Uh, we can also see here a couple of screws, and those are going to have to come out because that's what holds the cover on. I've already taken the other ones out, so these are the last two screws to go. Uh, no need to get the Phillips screwdriver out for this one because all the screws that hold it together are standard slotted screws. There's no Phillips screws in the whole thing, as far as I can see. Um, again, that gives you an idea of the age of it, the era when it was made. But, um, stiff getting these out, but probably see why in a moment. I'm going to put a bit of pressure on just to squeeze that together slightly. There is a oh, there is a seal, a rubber seal along here around the um, the faceplate of the meter. Um, so it's got some damp sealing. 
Um, this particular one is Bakelite all over. Um, the um, that's slightly springy. Um, this is Bakelite all over. There is a variant called the Model 8S, which is screened, and that's got a metal can, so it's got a metal rear part uh, rather than Bakelite. This one is the standard Model 8. Um, there's a seal to keep the worst of the damp and and uh, dirt out of the thing. Uh, you could, I believe, buy these instruments in a variation called the tropicalized version, which would be much more environmentally sealed and goes back to the, the days of British Empire when you would have to buy a special instrument for use in the tropics, which would be more rot resistant. So um, something like this. Uh, we'll see in a moment, contains components which are um, tropicalized, but the, the entire instrument isn't. So let's get the cover off that. It simply lifts out. Once we've got those screws out of the way, this should just lift out. It's just it's quite heavy. There we go. So that comes out of there. And that shows us the inside of the, the casing. Um, we've got these metal prongs. These two make contact with the high voltage terminals, the 2.5 kV terminals. These, they make contact with prongs on the inside of the meter. So this is a really, really quite a modern, uh, to my eye at least, quite a modern design. This is how uh, mobile phones are put together. Um, when you take the two halves of the thing apart, certain parts of it will, will uh, um, be pressing against the other half of the thing and usually nowadays gold-plated uh, so that say the battery and components in the other half of the case make contact there's no wiring linking the two halves together it's just contact pressure against the uh, these these prongs uh, of course in a mobile phone they're much smaller now with this opened up I think we can see in here that we've got some resistors down there and these are the resistors for the high voltage terminals a couple of carbon resistors here these are carbon composition these other resistors i don't think it's very clear but they actually say on them well in and they're labeled pan climatic so these are in fact um, resistors which have been made using materials that resist going moldy um, that one's a 14.7 meg, 2%. Um, the pan climatic labeling on there, it's not, as I say, a tropicalized meter, but at least it has got some of the components designed to resist going moldy. Now, you, don't ju you just don't see pan climatic written on resistors anymore. Um, I don't know whether that means that they are all rot resistant. I suspect it does. Uh, or it means that none of them are. I don't know, to be honest. Um, but these ones have been specially designed to resist rot and are labelled as such and probably cost more. Um, Avo probably bought them because they reckon they were a better quality part. So that's the back of it. Um, simply contains the battery holder, the connections to the meter for the batteries and the connections for the high voltage terminals and the high voltage dropping resistors. Um, so let's put that to one side and look at the inside of the good bit, which is, of course, the back of the the main meter itself. Let's just flip that over. There it is. So now we've got the inside of the Avo Model 8. That's a little bit closer. Um, this is the back of the scale, the moving coil uh, pointer. The point is down here somewhere at the moment and it will go across the scale like that. Um, this is the magnet that operates the moving coil movement. We've got a couple of variable resistors or potentiometers here which are used for zeroing the ohms ranges. Down here we have a big what looks like a brass kind of strip of metal coiled up. Um, that's one of the current shunts the highest current range on this thing is 10 amps so when it's running on the 10 amp range that current will flow through this shunt it has a small resistance just enough that 
there's a tiny voltage developed across it and that's enough to operate the meter movement and to read the current. Another thing that we've got in here for current purposes, this. This is a current transformer. So in the AC current ranges, again 10 amps, the AC current flows through the transformer and then is tapped off, rectified and again drives the display, drives the, the pointer. Let's lift that up a little bit and you can see some more of the the magnet and the um, pointer itself. In here these magnets are painted red. These are permanent magnets and I understand that painting them red is one of the things they did in the Mark II. The Mark I hasn't got that. Um, one terminal here, another terminal here coming out of the meter movement. That's the swamp resistor. That's simply in series with the um, coil of the moving coil meter. Um, that is a wire wound resistor. So it's a, just a little bobbin of wire. And that bobbin of wire has a certain resistance. This thing that slides, mechanically slides along, that is to adjust the intensity of the magnetic field. So these magnets are not particularly calibrated, so you slide this thing along during calibration to set the exact amount of magnetism that you need to get the meter to read correctly. All really rather clever stuff. More of those pan-climatic, well-in-branded resistors. These are the pins that make contact with the prongs on the other half of the, um, the, the outer case, so there's a long one and two short ones over here and on the long one and two short ones. Um, a big Bakelite slab here. There's no printed circuit board at all in this meter. It's entirely point-to-point um, -point wired. This is an insulating Bakelite slab. Um, there are terminals fed through holes in it, but there's no conductive tracks on here. There are lots of resistors. There's some are carbon, so it's not all wire wound. So there's some are carbon little bobbin there with a carbon uh, with a uh, wire wound resistor on i think that red and black thing could be a diode that'll be the only semiconductor in here uh, if we look at the back of the thing there again we've got another bobbin full of resistance wire which is in fact another uh, of the range or shunt resistors so that's just a wire wound resistor made out of resistance wire and along the back here We've got more of them. All along the back, we've got. Let's get that. There we go. These are all wire wound resistors wound around a slab of bakelite. So these are fairly sort of oblong resistors, and they're all wired up to the switches on the front. So these are probably current shunts. Particularly looking at this one with the rather heavier wire. That's most likely a current shunt. Um, Let's see if we can get a shot of the switching arrangements. How does it switch ranges? If we have a look in the side of it here, these things are stacks of brass or phosphor bronze springy contacts. Insulated one to the next, bolted down, and I think the same the other side. So we turn that round. We've got the same kind of thing over here not quite so many on this side. We've got the same stacks of contacts. If we have a look from this side, you can see there's the, the stack and there's the contacts. And if I turn the knob, I suspect they will move if I can get the right part of its range where that wants to switch. There it goes. So that is switching using a simple cam switching ranges over here for switch ranges again this comes out reasonably well focused it probably will be quite difficult to get it to focus on there we go so we've got switching operations as I turn the control knobs in the middle one of the characteristics of the AVO model 8 is this thing this is the cutout um, this is to protect the meter movement. If you put too much voltage across the meter for the range you're using, or you put too much current through it, you don't blow a fuse, you pop the cutout. And if I just nudge it a little bit with the screwdriver, there it goes, that's it cut out. 
So the contacts are open. If I push the button on the front, it's popped out a button on the front of the thing. That button popped right out. Uh, you can close that button again. It latches shut and now we've made contact. So we've got contact across here. I'll just pop that again so that we can see it pop. And of course in normal operation it's popped by a uh, solenoid or, a, or an electromagnet. The electromagnet is sensitive enough to protect the meter movement from overload. So I think that's pretty much that for the very fine AVO Model 8. It's all Bakelite, it's all uh, brass and copper in there, it's got some big hefty components, some big magnets. Um, they don't make them like they used to. Look at this thing. All that hand wiring. So this would have been manufactured on a production line by hand, just soldering wires on. Later versions, this is a Mark II, later versions had printed circuit boards. They looked the same on the outside. Um, you can tell from some of the characteristics of them. You can tell from the outside what, what model they are, what, what mark they are. Uh, but they're generally very much the same, the same size, the same controls, the same ranges, so that you could train someone to operate one of these and then buy a new, a new uh, a newer mark and it would all be just the same. The controls would be in the same places. Um, there we have it then. That's the AVO Model 8 Mark II analog multimeter.